Hello everyone and welcome to another War Leader PvMP video. Today I've got even more 1v1s to show you against a couple different classes and well it's gonna be good. This is also the 47th video that I have made for this particular playlist and uh, yeah, it's kind of interesting. I'm getting close to 50 now and it's pretty cool. Uh, definitely going a lot faster than the podcast is considering that we're two and a half years and only 32 episodes which I'm working on 32 right now. I'm still editing that. Whereas this channel, I think I'm coming close to my one year anniversary if I'm not, I haven't passed it, for when I actually started doing this particular playlist. And, well, yeah, pumped out a lot of videos for it. <laughs> In any case, let's go ahead and get started. Alright, now first off, there is uh, Webforth, and as you can see, I've buffed up to match his buffs, and then right off the bat, this Guardian attacks as well. Now Webby, he wanted to fight with me 1v1, and there, that explosion was also a lore master, so he backs off, and I realize he's letting me go, so I decide, okay, I'm gonna take on these these guys that have jumped me, because they haven't put a ton of damage on me. Uh, there's the lore master in the background, Oslin. I realize that he is the target that I need to go for first, because the Guardian's not gonna do a ton of damage, and he's not gonna die very fast. This guy will do a lot more damage, but he's also gonna die really quick. As long as the Guardian doesn't stand there and shield wall him, which, that would really be smart for him. But even if he does, I'm going to do more damage to the Guardian by hitting this guy through a shield wall than I will by hitting the Guardian directly. It's not like I have any da damage over time stuff that's going to be affected if he does get shield walled. Uh, right now that Guardian, he's wandered off and he's not even attacking me anymore, he's doing whatever. He should have stayed on me, because... This, this isn't even funny how little damage they're, ta they're putting into me and how much I'm putting into them. I, this guy is dead already. Okay, nope, he hit Wisdom of the Council. But he's an elf, so no man heals available, and I'm gonna blow him up. And look at that, 800. That, that guy's got no audacity. There's a clear sign of not having audacity. There we go, the Guardian's finally attacking me again, but pff, I've got this charged up heal ready to go and I'm waiting for them to actually put enough damage down to, to make it worthwhile. And I uh, hear a warg in the background there going after the Guardian. Okay, Warmaster dead, now onto the Guardian. And he's just dying incredibly fast because of that warg. And there he goes. Uh, honestly, I think I probably could have taken both of them if they'd both come after me just because of the, the sheer number of buffs I have on me and how little damage I'm putting. Alright, now that that little disturbance is done, I can try to fight Webforth again. Unfortunately, I did not use the Banner of Terror when we first tried, so <coughs> I actually have it available, which I'm going to need it. I also did pop my cooked food right there, my, my spicy toad biscuit, so that's going to be a big help in fighting him. Alright, he's already popped his controlled burn. Uh, I've put down Banner of Terror, of course, to try to slow down his damage output. And I need to get into commander stance now because, yep, yeah, there we go. I cannot keep up in brawler stance with the amount of damage he's able to put out. But commander stance, well, this is going to be a slugging match, and I'm just going to try to heal through stuff as best as I can, put damage on him, particularly with the shouts, get instant heals, all that fun stuff. And we'll see how it goes. Uh, fortunately, he does not seem to trait for bubbling and all of that kind of stuff. I believe he's fully into the red line, and oh, I got a nice big crit with Quitters right there, healed 7,000, that was very, very fortunate, because a big critical heal like that really can make or break a fight. Alright, he just popped up a, a nice big heal there, I believe that was, well, his power pool still seems really good, of course champs regenerate so fast, that might have been dire need, it might have just been a bracing and something else. Or maybe a, a potion, a morale potion. In any case, his health went back up, and now it's going back down, and so is mine. And there I, I went ahead and I abused the, the double heal. Yes, I'm using that against this guy. I'm trying not to do it too much, but it's you're going to see it a few times, because he hits so sneaking hard that I honestly need to use whatever advantages I can get. 
But actually, things are going quite well, all things considered. Uh, you know, I've popped both of my big cooldowns. He's popped a lot of his cooldowns as well. But his health is very, very low, which and he hasn't bubbled a single time. I, I'm still managing to keep up to a certain extent with the healing. Even my melee attacks, they're not doing too bad as far as damage output, which is really nice to see. And I'm hitting 61s with uh, the auto attacks and I don't crit, which is actually a decent number with Audacity around. And he does have full Audacity. Okay, I, I really need to, to get some heals up down here because he just popped up a whole lot more health. And I did manage to get a second application of my, my potion. And here we go, I'm gonna go for a double heal. And successfully pulled off. <laughs> which is going to keep me alive. Uh, so yeah, without the double heal, this would not be possible at all. Fortunately, I can, I can still get off the uh, crack the whip, even when he's attacking me. Just by doing the multi-tap and all that stuff, it does work. And uh, there's a very nice crit right there, so I heal up and I'm just going for a finish. And I should have him very shortly here. There he goes. And you know, as you can see, that was worth a lot. And I was very surprised to have actually killed him. Uh, then here comes Felrotten, one of the soloing lore masters who's around. And uh, you saw Gorkthor in the last video, but uh, Fel is definitely a lot tougher. He's going to have more audacity, hit harder, all that fun stuff. And there were 745 on a critical. Okay, he's going to get hit only a little bit less hard than that last lore master that we saw. Um, the other big thing is he does not have all his scrolls and everything. I'm still buffed up from the Webfirth fight. So this is more of just a, what happens when the war leader is fully buffed? This is what happens. Much bloodshed. <laughs> uh, get a grip. It's already off cooldown. I don't have my Banner of Terror available, but that's going to be coming off cooldown very shortly if I do need it. I wish I'd hit Fracture there, but I couldn't have known that he was about to pop that, and really there was just no time to interrupt it once the animation from Menacing Roar went off. I'm doing a good job of putting down a lot of damage on him. I'm keeping up with my own healing, and he's going to have Wisdom of the Council uh, still available. He'll be able to hit that very shortly, but no Strength and Morale because he is an Elf, and so that, that should help out quite a bit. I'm also doing a good job of making sure I'm hitting these tactical bots every single chance that I get, and that's definitely helping me just in terms of removing debuffs and removing a little bit of his dot damage, all that stuff. Okay, there we go, another hit. And, oh, it looks like it took off something that wasn't entirely too big, but still done a lot of damage. He's getting close to the bottom of his morale pool, and so he's either going to be killed or he's going to hit Wisdom of the Council. There went Wisdom, and, well, it wasn't a super big one, didn't critical hit or anything, so th that's going to be uh, very fortunate for me, and I'm going to be able to take him down pretty quick here. The nice thing about Felrotten, uh, fighting him versus the other lore masters we've seen, is that he likes to stay in melee range. And I'll be perfectly honest, staying in melee against the war leader is not a lore master's best option. And that's the way he chooses to fight, which more power to him. He can fight however you want to. But uh, honestly, war leaders must utilize their melee attacks against the lore master. It lets them interrupt. It lets them get a whole lot more damage done. And if they don't get that option, then they're finished. And apparently, I got him killed with an auto attack in there. Okay, so I go ahead and challenge Nyx here, and Nyx had tried to challenge me, but I decide I go ahead to go ahead, even though I am waiting for a cooldown so I can fight Webfirth again. Uh, I go ahead and hit my brand right off the top, and as you can see, I don't have Banner of Terror, that's the cooldown I'm waiting for to fight Webfirth with, so no matter what, I'm not going to use Banner of Terror just because I need that ready for the rematch with Webfirth. But uh, everything else is pretty much fair game, particularly Get a Grip, I, that one will be off cooldown no matter what. And I'd rather not use quitters, but I'm probably going to have to. But in the meantime, uh, things are going pretty well. This is just the difference between getting crowd controlled and not getting crowd controlled against a burglar. It is gigantic and enormous. Burglars, when they crowd control you, they take off just thousands and thousands of points of morale, and you do nothing to them. And really, the fact that they have so much burst damage available to them, and particularly when you're CC'd, it's just poor design, in all honesty. Why do they make it so that stealth classes can always shut people down and then blow them up while they're shut down? That's why people hate stealth classes. 
It's because you never see them coming, and they kill you but with you being able to do nothing about it. Alright, the fight's getting close to being one minute in length, so I'm probably going to be getting crowd control very shortly here. There we go, I actually hit that to remove the, the debuff, but uh, I got stunned. Joy. But still, continuing on, I've used up Get a Grip, and uh, if I get a crit, I'm going to have to use Quitters Never Win, just in order to keep up with all the damage that's getting thrown down. There it goes. But this does give me the, the amount of health I need to be able to finish Nyx, hopefully, as long as he doesn't hit Strength and Morale. Now there went that mischievous glee heal again, which, honestly, that's just another thing about burglars in particular that's just really annoying, is they heal so much from mischievous glee that it's really ridiculous. Okay, turn around, go ahead, blast him with a crit from Black Speech, and nail him with some with an auto attack and finish him off. And that's just not expected. And the web for three match. Go right at it. Uh, Banner of Terrors coming down right here. Come on, hit it. There we go. And of course we're fully buffed. I got my food and everything. But the big thing is that Greta Grip is on cooldown still. It's gonna be off in less than a minute. And Quitters is on cooldown. Alright, I've already gone ahead and dropped into Commander Stance, because I know how this fight's going to go. It's going to go like this. And, honestly, to get <laughs> Quitters off of cooldown, well, yeah, Quitters off cooldown, I'm going to have to use double heals a lot just to stay alive and to keep taking those 10 seconds off every time I can. But otherwise, it's it's a fairly matched fight, all things considered. Uh, there went get a grip as soon as it came off cooldown. Didn't get a really big heal out of it, but you know, still every bit counts. All right, and now I'm gonna go for another double heal here, and it didn't work. Oh well. Oh well, in, in any great, I do get off the crack the whip right there, but still I'm taking up way too much damage, and I got stunned there, which. The last time I fought him, I didn't get stunned until much, much later in the fight. Alright, gonna have to go for a double here. And that one actually worked. But as you can see, I'm, I'm taking just so much damage right now. And I really need quitters to be able to pull myself back up, give myself a chance against this guy. But it's just not off cooldown, so... I I make him do with double heals as much as I can, but man, his damage output is incredibly high. I got that heal off very fortunately, and here we go, I'm gonna try to get this heal done. And, whew, that was incredibly close. Did not get the crit there, so I ended up there I, I get dropped by a big remorseless crit. And so that's over. But, you know, as you can see, war leaders, when they actually buff up all the way, they become real powerhouses. And that's, that's just kind of a little odd, seeing that they need all those buffs to be able to properly compete against some of the classes they're fighting, particularly burglars. You know, I need an extra over 1,000 points of armor and a whole bunch of evasion and some resistance stuff, and plus the extra <laughs> mitigations I got from destiny points and the extra 5% damage, and then I was only just able to beat the burglar and had to pop my big cooldowns to do it. It just shows that there's some definite balance issues at work here. But anyway, <laughs> I did blow up everyone that I fought there, and that, that was really unexpected just to... To go 5-0 and o in a... Well, actually, I went 6-0 and o in a continuous streak. I started off this entire little fight club by fighting a minstrel. That took 10 minutes. I will make a video because I recorded the entire thing. But I decided not to include that here because 10 minutes is long enough to be a video all by itself. And that'll be my, my next video is that we do a minstrel. But I, I went 6-0 and o until Webfirth finally dropped me in his rematch. Anyway, you saw what happened there and everything. So uh, hopefully I'll give you something to think about. And uh, in the meantime, good luck and have fun out there.
Uggmark is out.